Yeah, let's move on to, I believe it's our man, Dan Coughlin, the special projects officer from Joby Aviation. And that's a great picture, but that's not a Joby in that oh. one. So maybe it's time to update your little photo there. I was much better looking back in those days, so I prefer to keep that, that photo. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> yeah, the floor is yours, Dan. Josh, thanks. Uh, it just occurred to me that you, Josh, you've been working so closely with us. You could probably give this presentation as well or better than uh, than I can. Um, but uh, nevertheless, appreciate the opportunity. So as Josh mentioned, uh, my title is Special Projects. Um, it's, it's an intentionally vague title. I, my job generally is to try to stay ahead of the company for two years. Uh, so things that we're going to need in two years, uh, the long lead items, the facilities, the equipment, the employees, the projects and programs, uh, I um, generally spearhead those. Uh, next chart, please. <clears throat> uh, next chart. So who are we? Um, the company started in Santa Cruz, California. Uh, it's it's Our product is an all-electric aircraft. Uh, it's unique in that it takes off vertically uh, like a helicopter, uh, transitions to uh, forward flight, or we call it on the wing flight, and then lands vertically, uh, all using electric uh, uh, motors and um, and electric uh, lithium ion batteries. Its intended uh, use is a uh, air taxi, so uh, it's a four passenger, one pilot aircraft. Uh, imagine getting from you know Marina, California, to SFO in fourteen minutes, um, and you do it quietly. Uh, and with no carbon emissions at all, uh, no operating carbon emissions. And uh, and that's its intent. We're going to have a like an app-based aerial ride-sharing service, hopefully starting in 2025, 2026, um, as we go through our certification process. I'll, today, I'll talk about the aircraft itself and then, uh, and then uh, more specifically, uh, our footprint in Monterey and Santa Cruz. Uh, next, next chart. A uh, little bit of repeat, but it's one pilot, four passengers. Again, it takes off vertically and lands vertically. Uh, no operating emissions. Uh, range is about 150 miles. Um, and that's with reserve. So uh, um, we we talk about range and max speed, which is 200 miles an hour. Although the aircraft's sweet spot is really, you know, our, the intended use is inner city travel. Uh, this is, you know, to solve problems that we have building new infrastructure in, in this state also, but in the country just generally. Highways are getting more and more expensive to build. You know, trains aren't, uh, you know, providing mass transportation. And so uh, the idea is this aircraft would allow you to live outside of the city or um, to, to get around within cities or around cities uh, much easier and much uh, quicker uh, and not pollute the environment. <clears throat> um, it's about 4,800 pounds, a little bit shy of 5,000 pounds, about 45 feet wide. So it's kind of like the size of a Cessna 172, but uh, much lighter in that it's uh, it's made entirely out of carbon composite uh, material. Ne uh, next chart. <clears throat> we, uh, the company's headquartered in Santa Cruz. So Santa Cruz, you know, it's a little beach town. It's probably the least likely place you would think that there'd be an innovative uh, aircraft company, but it was started by uh, uh, my CEO. I work for him. He's just a yeah, you know, an entrepreneur, he's crazy. Uh, he's entrepreneur crazy, which is great. And started it in his yard in a barn. And uh, this was in 2009, making electric motors for a NASA contract. And then over the years, he, um, you know, grew the business into building airframes and flying full-scale prototypes in 2017. I joined in 2018. We had about 100 people in the company. We're now up to 1,800, uh, I think, um, uh, globally. Uh, we went public in 2021. Uh, in 2018, we knew we, uh, uh, you know, setting up, we we had gone through full, um, the development phase. The vehicle was largely set in terms of its design, and we knew that we were going to be starting production of the aircraft at some point. And uh, we looked, uh, you know, within a hour radius or so of, of Santa Cruz to look for an airport uh, that we could set up our production facility and found the Marina Municipal Airport with Josh's help. And... Um, and went about over the next few years uh, leasing the big hangars there and other buildings and gutting them and and converting them into production facilities. Uh, and they're up and operating now. We have a we have a rather large facility up in San San Carlos. This uh, uh, area, this group is responsible for develop developing the the um, the electric motors and the battery packs. And the reason it's up there is really so we could tap into some of the high tech skill. Uh, skills coming out of Tesla and other electric car companies. 
Uh, so I'm sitting in headquarters now at Santa Cruz. Um, we, you know, our, our finance group, HR group, and some engineering, some testing is up here. But for the most part, our, our center of gravity is down in uh, Marina, California. Uh, next chart. Uh, just a quick timeline. You can see we, you know, in 2015, we were flying small scale prototypes. By 2019, we had really set the design of the aircraft, was flying, you know, full scale prototypes at that point. Uh, 2022, we really were in deep with the FAA and the certification process of this aircraft, which we're still doing. Uh, we rolled out our first production aircraft last year in June. And uh, it's we, we call it our um, our company certified aircraft. So we built it to standards required by the FAA, but we're not yet certified. And so all the aircraft that are coming off the line down in Marina now are going to be used for testing, or we also have a, a Department of Defense customer, the Air Force specifically, that will be um, flying our, our aircraft on Air Force bases as a taxi service, uh, which is great for us. It's, it's you know sustaining revenue uh, until we get certification of the aircraft in 2025 and can start flying commercial operations. We'll be flying on Air Force bases, which, which is good, you know, not only from a revenues perspective, but also it allows us to understand all the infrastructure that's required of what we call vertiports or heliports, the charging infrastructure, you know, what's the maintenance of these things, how many, op, you know, uh, personnel do you need to operate these? And and so we'll cut our teeth on all that before we actually hit the commercial market uh, uh, later this decade. Next chart. Just a quick chart on this. So we talk about the noise, um, we talk about in decibels, it's kind of an obscure um, uh, measurement. You can see where our takeoff, uh, if you're 100 meters away, it's at about 60 dB, 65 dB, and that is less than probably what you're hearing now. Uh, it's less than a you know conversation in a room. Uh, when it's flying overhead, you and it's you know 500 feet in the air, you don't hear it, um, and that's the unique aspect of this aircraft. One is it's environmentally friendly, but the other is we're not we're really not doing anything different that a helicopter service couldn't do, except for the operating costs of this aircraft are substantially lower. Electric motors are super simple, and uh, and so the operating cost is lower, and it's and it's extremely quiet. And so, uh, you know, the hope is is that communities will um, agree for uh, you know these aircraft to fly in and out of uh, their municipalities. Next chart. Uh, specifically in Marina, uh, so that's a picture of the aircraft. A uh, little bit better picture of it. It's a six rotor aircraft. A uh, lot of redundancy on the aircraft just for inherent safety systems. There's two electric motors per rotor. So if one electric motor goes down, the other one takes over uh, automatically. There's four battery packs. Uh, and so if any one battery pack were to go down, the other three just ramp up and, and the aircraft can land uh, successfully vertically on three battery packs. It can land horizontally on two battery packs should two go down. Um, it can land horizontally on two rotors. And so uh, there's a lot of just inherent safety just built in inherently into the architecture of the of the system. Uh, next chart. A <clears throat> uh, little fuzzy, but this is a bird, bird's eye view of what used to be the Fort Ord Air Base. So uh, it was a largely a helicopter base for the Army. It was used for training for um, it really had its heyday during uh, Vietnam. Uh, so if you were recruited and you were west of the Mississippi, you probably went through Fort Ord for helicopter training, uh, getting in and out of helicopters, jumping out of helicopters or whatever, flying them. Um, it was bracked to the city uh, and the and other other aspects of Fort Ord were um, turned over to Seaside and other uh, um, cities around there, counties. Um, in fact, that's where Josh uh, came in. He was part of FORA. That was a statewide agency that was overseeing the development of these old army assets. This air base was, uh, you know, seen as a, a, a potential area for economic growth. It kind of sat unused for a few decades. They had some tenants out there, but it was not the cost. It wasn't the profit center that the city had hoped. Um, so there was a lot of available space down there, and we just started leasing them. Uh, and really just kind of, you know, gutting them, putting in brand new infrastructure. Uh, that took a few years. Um, and as Josh mentioned earlier, we uh, partnered with PG&E to bring more power out there for us. And so that's all happening now. Uh, next chart. Uh, 
thanks to Josh and others, we uh, just um, we received a California grant uh, to help with our expansion there. So we're already at, I think we're pushing 400 employees. It's definitely over 300 down in Marina, largely manufacturing employees. Um, but we've got a whole construction crew and a kitchen crew. And, you know, we're, we're vertically integrated, as the chart said. We rarely use outside consultants. We hire it within. Um, but we'll be building a 225,000 square foot facility, almost doubling our, our footprint down there. And that will increase our um, production rate of our aircraft to somewhere between 25 and 50 aircraft per year. Um, there'll be about 600. We, Company-wide in California, we'll be adding about 600 employees uh, because of this expansion and an, about another $40 million in capital expenditure. So that's between the building and all the equipment that's going to go in it. Uh, next chart. Uh, it's just another aircraft. So in addition to the buildings we've leased and, and converted, we also built this massive tent. It's a 55,000 square foot tent. It serves as the, what we call our integration tent. So all the parts of the aircraft are made in these other buildings they flow into this tent and that's where it's basically assembled and uh so parts flow in one end and uh, aircraft flow out the other uh next chart and that's just a rendering of what the new building is going to look like beside the uh uh tent we've already we released rfp for this building we're in the process now of selecting a contractor we hope to break ground um you know spring of this year and uh, we're expecting it to take about a year to build i um, mean in parallel we'll be procuring all the equipment that's going to go in and hiring the folks. And thanks to our partners down in Monterey, we've, you know, established training programs. We've got a feeder system of, you know, employees that we're bringing in and training. We have a six month training program. It's completely paid. Um, and uh, it's just really, really our partnerships down in Monterey have just really uh, benefited the company. So we're really grateful for, for those of you on the phone that have helped and, and Josh specifically next chart. I just pictures of happy faces. It's a, it's again, the, it's a, it's built out of carbon composites of fabric. It's like a metal fabric infused with a resin and uh, it's very labor intensive to build. We are maturing some technologies to automate it a bit, but it's always going to be pretty much a hand built aircraft. Um, our first production aircraft took about eight months to build. Our second one is about to roll off the line. It took four months to build. And so we're, we're climbing that learning curve now. And, um, and just, you know, as, as we approach certification of the aircraft, we also have to get the production line certified itself. So everything is measured, everything is calibrated and everything is tracked. Um, and uh, we hope to certify the production uh, process by the same time that we receive the, what we call a type certification of the aircraft. And that's in 2025. And uh, I think that's it. We're hiring, you know, go to the website. We're, we're looking for folks. So um, send them our way. Okay, Dan, thank you for that. Um, I have seen that a few times, but every time I do see it, there's something new. <laughs> um, and yeah, this is a project that um, I became involved in back in 2018 as well, when you guys first started making big moves in the marina. And it's just great to see the progress. It's incredible to see the progress, actually. And um, you know, it's been a pleasure working with you guys and just to be able to make, make, you know, have a, have a hand in making some of this stuff happen with the state recently and, uh, all that. I'll put a couple video links in the chat for folks Thanks. about the apprenticeship program, which, uh, is the training program that Dan mentioned. That's something that we've been able to get started with, uh, support from the Irvine Foundation. That's just been great in, um, a number of ways. So, Looking forward to what, what's coming up this year in 24. And